So good day, we will be presenting our Philippine City Water Security 2050 Future Scenarios for PA152 Urban and Metropolitan Governance by Libiran, Lubigan, and Abog. How can we meet the water needs of a rapidly growing urban population, specifically in Baguio City? Can we provide the equitable water services in a world increasingly faced with water scarcity and environmental degradation? How can we achieve this without further compromising the planet's ecosystem? As stated in a report by World Economic Forum in 2014, water security is one of the most tangible and fastest growing social, political, and economic challenges faced today. It is also a fast unfolding environmental crisis in every sector. The demand for water is expected to increase, and the analysis suggests that the world will face a 40% global shortfall between the demand and the available supply by 2050. Water is a precarious and increasingly critical resource. Water crises were ranked as the third biggest risk in terms of impact. However, strictly speaking, four of the identified top 10 risks are water-related. The water crisis, climate change mitigation and adaptation, extreme weather conditions, and a food crisis. Despite all this, Water issues are often overlooked or misunderstood, and there is a need for better awareness of the social, economic, and environmental impacts, especially in Baguio City. Baguio City Scenario 2050 depicts four plausible scenarios in the future of urban water utilities by 2050. By understanding the trends and planning for the future, through our research and brown bag discussion, we have formulated the water, that water utilities can create more engaging stakeholder experiences and enhance the livability in Baguio City and get more out of the current and future assets. These scenarios can be used to explore the viability of the different strategies, inspire innovation, and assist in the long-term planning for a more sustainable and resilient urban water system. We believe that the challenges to deliver secure and safe sustainable water can be met with only collaboratively and interacting with stakeholders and being open to new ideas and innovation. This report is aimed to at the water sector, utilities, government, cities, communities, and other individuals or organizations interested in the future of urban water in Baguio City. The responses in these drivers will be critical in determining the nature of urban water supply in the future. Further, businesses operating in the world of rapid social and technological, economic, and environmental po political changes will face a number of uncertainties and challenges. Drivers of change will assist us in identifying risk and opportunities and help us better understand long-term issues preparing us for the future ahead. The scenarios in our report are intended to provide a picture of the possible futures of Baguio City while describing the challenges and opportunities facing water sector specifically, as well as the water cycle in the city. Our scenarios will assist and identify the developing actions and strategies towards achieving a preferred future. Let's dive in into our first scenario, Humans Inc. Humans Inc. represents our current trajectory a world in which societal conditions advance at the cost of planetary health. A city with little changes to the existing assets and operations, with a centralized water supply system that is with a separate provision of utilities. The global economy is growing, albeit slowly. Governments and businesses have not done enough to curb greenhouse gas emissions and the effects of climate change are becoming increasingly severe. We continue to break temperature records and extreme weather events are increasingly common. Baguio City is experiencing an increase in droughts with more frequent hot days and nights. Climate change adaptation are reactive and short term, not recognizing the macro trends and opportunity has been lost to address the broader outcomes. However, due to the implementation of new and advanced technologies, it becomes possible to adopt the consequences of climate change in the scenario. Currently, as expounded by Prof. Tubrica, the governance structure and decision-making in Baguio City is tapped down, and there is an urgent need for intercollaboration for different stakeholders for it to be a success. If we continue this, 
there will be a huge gap in the overall future of the city and the problem of water scarcity. Almost no collaboration between utilities is happening and customers are disengaged. Those investments happening in regard to water use efficiency and security of supply are mainly driven by resource constraints and regulatory pressures. However, as utilities are still operating in isolation, an effective overarching strategy of reducing resource consumption wasn't implemented as of yet. Businesses are still only reacting to financial incentives and legislation. Baguio City as well is able to integrate smart technologies, albeit to climate change. The behavior and KPIs have brought incremental improvements to the performance of the existing system, despite the locals not caring enough about the water issues and embracing the throwaway culture completely. The water planning is heavily centralized and with the lock of agreed and clear objectives of the water and by political interventions in planning, options, and decisions. Infrastructure's conditions are left in ruins and no funding. This results in the Humans Inc. Baguio City water system still operating in a more linear rather than a circular way. Utilities are still primarily focusing on water supply and cost control without fundamentally rethinking consumption patterns. Next scenario is Grintocracy. The next scenario tackles Grintocracy where in climate action and biodiversity recuperation are top line of very national and transnational agenda. It revolves around three major institutions and actors that greatly affects and being affected by each action. First, governance. Strict and regulatory policies which focus on climate action and environmental protection are implemented. Since the city is focusing on the recuperation of the environment, policies may range from reusing waste to put the environmental code and studies on every curricula of every student, to restrictive living conditions, up until stricter policies which can cause significant harm to the people. Second, the environment. A healthy environment enjoys its highest priority of the city. There won't be any water insecurity. For the city focus its policies and innovations on solving this problem and there will be enough water for the city's consumption. Reuse on waterways will also be prioritized. In addition, the effects of climate change, pollution, and disasters are reduced than expected for the city is more than prepared with any sudden changes to the environment and protection to its land is given importance too. Next is the people. Severe restrictions implemented by the government in order to keep up with the environmental code may do sacrifices from the people. This may be caused from the trade-offs wherein the prioritization on environment limits or lowers the living conditions of people. There will be a lower carbon allowance per person wherein the carbon dioxide use of people are counted and limited. Yes, there is enough water for the city's consumption, but this is because of restrictive and limited use of water of people. There might be policies on how much water can be used per household or even per person. Reliance on synthetic food will also happen, or the city want to leave the nature alone. Hence, resorting to synthetic foods made by laboratories and food manufacturers. Printocracy is a scenario wherein the environment is at its booming stage. But at what cost? Your people. So let us now go to the other scenario. What if Baguio City reached the worst scenario in water security by the year 2050? Hence, we are having the so-called extinction extinction. Mainly, there will be problems in the economy, there will be environmental extinctions, thus it will be difficult for the locality of Baguio City. Then we ask, what causes this scenario? What are schools and universities do? They continue to excel, but researchers are only for completion. Literally, they are just papers. Next, the NGOs and private sectors are only concerned with their businesses. Restaurants and tourist spots are mainly focused on earning money. Thus, there is no concern for the environment as a whole. Then what about the LGU? There is only a political approach. There is no consideration for scientific one. More so, corruption persists, and only ordinances which provide personal gains for them are being approved. So overall, there is a lack of proper coordination with the government, academe, NGOs, and local communities. Lastly, what will happen to people of Baguio? They will be having difficulty in accessing water. 
as scheduled on water rotation, will be extremely applied. Then illegal depots will multiply. And worse, for communities barely secure water because it costs a lot. But of course, we are hoping for the best. So now, let us go to the fourth scenario, which is the post on Tropocene. With here, there is a balance in everything. We give equal importance for the economic, environmental, scientific innovation, and social concerns. LGUs now consider scientific approach to solve the problem. They also provide policies that incentivize people who practice water conservation. There is also a coordination among all the sectors. Aside from providing accurate data, the academe also integrate the issue to their curriculum, and most importantly, they are the main drivers that help local community to become water literate. NGOs, on the other hand, harness capability of universities and social enterprises. They share international perspective that allows technological innovation, but of course, innovations with accurate care for the environment. With the help of all the sectors, Baguio City is perceived to be livable and will be able to sustain its own beauty without compromising its water security. For our conclusion, the future of urban water is influenced by a broad range of factors with water scarcity, urban population growth, and the resulting necessity for efficient systems being the most influential ones. Knowing this, we, as the people, must plan ahead. The explored drivers of change and the future scenarios expounded in our presentation reflect the necessity for water utilities to be prepared in operating and succeeding in a future that will be likely utterly different from the current stature that we are experiencing today. Water utilities need to be prepared to serve more people in the future while simultaneously dealing with the increasing scarcity and the competition in resources. Furthermore, increasing investment in green infrastructure, primarily in rainwater management, could offer the opportunity to access and directly treat new and currently underutilized water resources. Water utility providers increasingly need to look at solutions through a different lens. Additionally, green infrastructure provides the possibility to provide waterways into parks or provide natural capital and amenities to the citizens, rather than seeing water treatment as a technological process separated from nature. Urban water utilities in Baguio could thus shift away from the water provision as hidden services towards a more visible service and key contribution to public life. Another opportunity area that is crucial to success to any plan and expounded in our brown bug discussion is to tap into the key stakeholders and representatives. The engagement in the behavior change and interventions in order to better influence and manage the demand and supply. More and more data availability through the increasing digitalization offers opportunities for investment in real-time monitoring for network utilization in order to enhance the operation and asset management in Baguio City. To better deal with the future challenges, water utility providers have to favor integrated solutions over isolated interventions. This provides chance for water utilities and the people as well as the stakeholders to, buy, to provide a fundamental role in shaping the healthy and water-sensitive Baguio City. What we need is an integrated, collaborative, and inclusive future, wherein all stakeholders are part of the decision-making to inculcate the best future for the summer capital of the Philippines. That is all for our group. Thank you so much for listening.